Lesson 1.1c, Finding Square Roots and Cube Roots. A square root is a number that is multiplied by itself to form a product, like 5 times 5. 5 is multiplied by itself 5, we get 25. So the square root of 25 is equal to 5. But it's also equal to negative 5. Since a negative times a negative is a positive, there are two square roots for every positive number, like a positive 25. 5 squared is equal to 25, and negative 5 squared is equal to 25. So positive 5 and negative 5 are the two square roots of a positive 25. The square root of a positive 25 is a positive 5 or a negative 5. We can write these with a plus and minus sign for a positive and negative to the left of the 5 to show that it's positive or negative 5. A number that is a perfect square has square roots that are integers, positive and negative whole numbers. Remember, that's what integers are. So we know that 1 is a perfect square because 1 times 1 is 1, and negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. And for 4, we can do a positive or negative 2. For 9, we can do a positive or negative 3. For 16, positive or negative 4. For 25, we know it's positive or negative 5. For 36, it's positive or negative 6 squared. So 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, and so on are perfect squares. 7 times 7 is 49, so 49 would be a perfect square. Here we have 1 fourth squared. That means 1 fourth times 1 fourth. It's equal to 1 sixteenth. And negative 1 fourth squared is equal to a positive 1 sixteenth. Therefore, the square root of 1 sixteenth is a positive or negative 1 fourth. In math, this arrow, when you see an arrow pointing to the right like that, it means therefore or implies that it means that. And the radical sign, that's this symbol, represents the positive or principal square root. The square root of 1 16th is equal to positive or negative 1 4th is red, just like that. The square root of 1 16th is equal to positive or negative 1 4th. Here it's telling us to solve the equation for x, and the equation is x squared is equal to 169. We solve for x by taking the square root of both sides, both sides of the equation, which means we remove the exponent 2, see how it's taken away, from x, and we put 169 in a radical sign. That's taking the square root of both sides. This little two exponent is this radical sign on this side. So now we think, what number squared is equal to 169? Well, 10 squared is 100, 12 squared is 144. We can try 13 times 13, 13 squared, and we get 169. That way we know that x is equal to a positive or negative 13, since negative 13 times negative 13 is a positive 169. So we know the solutions are positive 13 and negative 13. The cube root of a positive number is a number that is multiplied by itself three times. The cube root of 8 is 2 because 2 to the third power, 2 cubed, is equal to 8. It's multiplied by itself three times, 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. And we can write it as a little 3 here with our radical sign with the 8 underneath the radical sign, and it's equal to 2. Now be careful, negative 2 to the third power, or negative 2 cubed, is not equal to 8. Because negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. And positive 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. So be very careful. There is one cube root for every positive number. 
So looking ahead in algebra, we have a square root here. And a little number at the outside of the radical sign is called the index. There's a little 2 here for square root. Square roots have 2 as their index, but we usually don't write it. Cube roots have a 3 as their index. When there's no index, we assume the 2 is there, and we're dealing with a square root. So a square root actually has 2 for an index, but we usually don't write it. So it's just like that. Here it's telling us to solve the equation for x. We have 216 is equal to x cubed, or x to the third power. We solve for x by taking the cube root of both sides, which means we put a radical sign and 3 index on both sides of the equation. So here we had 216 all by itself. Now we have 216 with a radical sign and a little 3 index. And our x to the third power now has a radical sign with a little 3 index. We do it on both sides of the equation. We remove the radical, exponent, and index from x. So we're going to take away the radical sign, the exponent, and the index from x and leave it like this. And we think, what number cubed is equal to 216? So a number times a, the same number times the same number should be equal to 216. We can try a bunch of different numbers. We know 2 cubed is only 8. So we can try 5 cubed. 5 times 5 is 25. Times 5 is 125. So we can try 6. It's like a guess and check. 6 times 6 is 36, and 36 times 6 is equal to 216. We know x is equal to 6. The cube root of 1 1 25th is 1 5th, because 1 5th times 1 5th times 1 5th is equal to 1 125th. A number that is a perfect cube has a cube root that is an integer. That's a positive or negative whole number. So this is not a whole number, is it? This is a fraction. So we have 1 cubed, that's equal to 1. 2 cubed is equal to 8. 3 cubed is equal to 27, 4 cubed is equal to 64, and so on. So 1, 8, 27, and 64 are perfect cubes. The cube root of 8 is equal to 2. We read it as the cube root of 8 is equal to 2. The square root of a positive number p is x if x squared is equal to p. What does that mean? It's like the square root of 16, if p was 16, is 4. So let's say x is equal to 4 if 4 squared is equal to 16. See? We can do the same thing with p and x for cube root. The cube root of a positive number p is x if x cubed is equal to p. The cubed root of 8 is 2 if 2 cubed is equal to 8. See? We're finished with 1.1c. We're going to move on to the last part of the lesson, estimating irrational numbers. We'll talk about what irrational numbers are, if you don't know. I sure hope this all made sense to you. If it did, hit the like button for me. And please join me for the next part of the lesson, the last part. Have a wonderful day. Bye.